And we are back on air. This is Olga's show. We're just trying to close our English speaking part here. Sergio, criminal attorney, with us. His website, yourfirstdefense.com. Your and then uh, number one, uh, stdefense.com. And um, if you have further questions you, or response to us, please uh, call us at 408 912 5265. You will be live on air or try to contact olgashow.org. Uh, website now under constructions because we have some changes into our radio program as well. And um, I can only say here that um, uh, here um, Angela was talking to us and uh, you mentioned that uh, you had a very difficult time and what would you like to add into? Um, the only advice that I could give for people that have the problem um, of um, having visitations with their children and there are in a case with the move away case meaning that the parent the custodial parent lives in a different state to try to enforce your court order in that state because um, I'm a California resident and the uh, the court was here and they had jurisdiction here and I have taken the father to court six times for contempt for not letting me see my daughter for visitations however every single contempt charge was dropped and dismissed um, but when I finally took the avenue to take it to Washington to enforce my court order in Washington I finally got justice and he was found in contempt two times and I was finally able to see my daughter on a continuous basis. So um, if you can, and you have a move away case, try to see what kind of rights you have in that state and um, fight, fight with that avenue. So now living pretty much without your daughter and your daughter far away, have few visitations here and there, having supervised visits because that was the only venue for you to see the child. How does that make you felt during all this time? Um, it's very demoralizing being on supervised visits because it makes you feel like you're not a parent to your child because somebody's watching over your shoulders. Um, it's very unnatural visitation. Um, but I knew I had to do everything that the court told me that I had to do in order to gain more visitations. So I have just stuck it out and I've done everything that I had to and now finally um, I went from supervised visits to to unsupervised visits which I had eight hours unsupervised visits once a month then I went to overnight visits once a month now I finally have um, holidays and summer vacation but um, he was um, obstructing those longer visits and like I said I, I finally got justice in the other state and I finally get to see my kid now on a, on a regular basis. Now in terms of those supervisors who would supervise you, do you think there are any person uh, like specialized in supervised visitations, has education special for it? Because I heard that some of the cases person would be supervised by the woman or man who doesn't even have their own children making some notes or maybe not and just because somebody has their social prejustice or cultural prejustice will give reports which already are not in the favor of the uh, parent who supervised and of course for them it's good to keep that parent on supervised visits so they would not give those reports good um, because they will be a supervising agency will be continuing to make money. That's what you see in your case as well? I am not um, able to give a comment on that because I don't know what kind of background um, the different supervised visits um, supervise, supervisors had because I was watching to make sure that I did everything so I can get out of supervised visits. So I didn't want to make any waves whatsoever. I did exactly what I was told. I didn't ask any questions. I came on time. I did my visit. So the, uh, after you did your first allegation and you were taken away your custody because you said that your child was molested, raped, abused, after that you were decided to be quiet. 
Yes, I mean, what other options do you have? I mean, basically, the court is taking all your rights away. You have no voice. You're being alleged of things that you're not doing. And um, basically, you have to do what the court tells you to do. So you felt like a suspect, or how would you say in criminal case, uh, um, Sergio? Do you have any comments on that situation? I know it's kind of strange for you maybe to hear that, but... I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Uh, so uh, what, uh, what do you think as an attorney in criminal law that she was actually taking away the custody and became quiet? So she just shot in herself. Um, basically, the whole time I've been sitting here listening about family law and what's been happening, I'm in shock because I find it really hard to believe these things are happening because of my experience in criminal law. The victims would never be allowed to stay quiet. They would be encouraged. They would be supported. They would be helped by the district attorney's offices, by the victim's assistance officer. There's all this money and all these resources, that, at least in the criminal side, to encourage people to participate in the system and to encourage justice. And that's not what I'm hearing tonight. In this situation, actually, parents would be forced to pay a lot of money to protect their children's rights. and. Um, to be able to see and help their children. Yeah, it sounds to me like maybe perhaps um, reforms of what's going on in the family court system is what's needed, political and you know legal reforms. And um, so again, uh, as I read over and over different reports and what you read through medical reports and it's very harsh situation. I hope you would never lose your child. I would uh, like to find out from our guest what would you like to wish to our viewers and listeners. I think um, if you can, try to stay out of the court system. Try to work it out with your other partner, your husband, your ex-husband, ex the father of your child. Um, if you can, educate yourself as much as possible. I have been in the legal system for, for 12 years and I have learned a lot and I have represented myself and I have had some triumphs. But um, don't go in there blindly thinking that family court is going to be there and is going to up uphold the law. But because they don't. They listen to the better story and um, that's basically it. So educate yourself and read up on the law. If you are unsupervised visit always request uh, your uh, reports right away and yes you are allowed and must take a background check on attorneys, supervisors, mediators. Um, I guess like our attorney said that it's called bar that C for California.gov where you can complain and perhaps find out information about the attorneys involved. And uh, same information, I don't know, websites exist for any psychologist involved in the cases. Also from being a criminal attorney, I don't know if you have this information, but from our understanding, San Jose actually uh, a little better in criminal defense or more available for the children. Sunnyvale is good too. Vallejo on another case when the f city filed for bankruptcy didn't really pr prosecute in a lot of criminal cases. Do you have any experience on that yourself? Uh, I'm fairly new to the area so I'm not too familiar with the resources that they have in the different counties or cities but I do know that at least in Vallejo they are suffering uh, due to uh, budgetary problems. Uh, I heard recently that they uh, had to lay off half of their police force in Vallejo so they definitely are still starving for resources. So, meaning that crime there were um, investiga not investigated properly and now it's getting even worse. So, and as we know from San Jose and we listen and hear that from politicians and I wish I can interview that but I will interview one of the uh, politician who said and um, he's supporting to increase police force in San Jose area because when police force decrease the crime increase and uh, getting worse and worse so not surprisingly Vallejo and many other cities with decreased uh, police force will have more problems in that regard uh, what would you Sergio will wish to our viewers and listeners as an attorney 
in criminal law and immigration? Uh, I would encourage people to, uh, whatever your needs are, whether you're a victim or whether you're wanting to defend yourself from charges or false charges, uh, persistence in my view, at least in criminal matters, pays off. Whether you want to fight your case, the more you fight, a lot of times, the better you're off you're going to get. And same thing with victims. If you want to fight to make sure that the person that hurts you or your family, you have to keep on top of law enforcement. You have to keep calling. You have to keep complaining. You have to keep writing letters uh, on either side of the criminal law matters, whether you're, like I said, a victim or a victimizer. Uh, persistence pays off is what I've seen. And what, Leslie, would you like to add to your wishes to our viewers and listeners? Um, like uh, already one of our um, uh, commentators said, uh, stay away from court as much as possible. Try to negotiate with another side. I don't think the criminal attorney like to hear that because <laughs> they're all for justice. So, <laughs> <laughs> But from my experience and what I've seen for the last eight years, if you are a foreigner, especially a mother, that uh, justice is questionable in our family court, especially in Santa Clara and San Mateo County. Also, I would like to uh, say that um, we have a, a group of people who actually um, try to uh, learn about the law. We are reading the law and uh, our rights and uh, we're trying to um, actually stand for ourselves. So if you have um, uh, actually, if you have, um, uh, if you wish to join our group, um, our group is called Return Peace, and phone number 650-206-8373. So what's the name of the website again? Um, uh, we don't have a website yet because we don't have funding yet, but uh, we start this group, Return Peace. Return Peace. Yes, and it's a group of people who get in together who are victim of uh, our, unfortunately, family law justice, and we are getting together and we try to help each other. So phone number 650-206-8373. Thank you, Olga. Thank you. And once again, I would like to say that the child we previously spoke about, um, if you want to help with um, um, putting memorial stone, um, please let us know. I know Bocce Memorial Stone, which is in Colma City, trying to help us, and we're going to talk about more. If you come to their um, services in Colma City, then you will say Olga Show. You will get 10% discount on your services. At the same time, uh, it will help with a stone memorial stone for the child who suffered and his justice yes yet to come to light and um, those who are willing to help and donate you can contact through paypal and the email you can use olgacherry at yahoo.com olgacherry at yahoo.com and again bocci b-o-c-c-i memorials and if you look into it uh, that's what is available and the people are so nice there they even come to your place will explain what is available what kind of stones they can put in memory of your loved ones anywhere here in california they will drive to your place explain to you um, and work with you in any cemeteries to bring the beautiful craft stones pictures on the last rest place of your loved ones in that case I wish you all well Olga show and we come into our Russian programming in few minutes and meanwhile we're gonna play uh, one of the songs for us and here it is mm -hmm. 